Okay, today's video is called Getting the Present Tense Right in Picture Cards. One of the things that came up as a really common error in the uh, last exercise that was done by students both in Year 9 and in Year 11, quite possibly also in Year 10, was getting their present tense wrong in the picture card. So hopefully this video will help us to address that issue so that we can get it right uh, and get some real credit for the work that we're doing. So the aim of this slideshow is to address the most common error on the picture card relating to using the third person singular and plural in the present tense. It's also to introduce what I've uh, dubbed the Norfolk translation method, more of that later. Uh, to give you some worked examples, including using the structure qui or who as a conjunction to join two things together. Uh, to explore word reference as a tool which could help us to conjugate verbs accurately. In this instance, we're going to focus on the present tense of third person singular and third person plural. And also to give you the opportunity to tackle some examples on your own, just to see whether or not you can learn the lessons that have been articulated in this PowerPoint. So what is the problem? The main problem is that people are trying to literally translate sentence and making mistakes as a result. This relates particularly to where students are trying to talk about what a person is doing in a picture or what people are doing in a picture. Uh, and in order to eradicate this error where people are trying to translate the word is and translate the word are and the ing bit of the verb, I've come up with what I call the Norfolk translation method. And this relates to a little quirk of Norfolk speech that I have uh, picked up uh, and heard since living in Norfolk. So what I'll do is I'll explain the Norfolk translation method. So here's a little picture of the Norfolk flag as I explain the Norfolk translation method. There's a strange quirk of the Norfolk vernacular, of a kind of a broad Norfolk way of talking, where people seem to put the subject pronouns next to the infinitive. So um, he goes becomes he go, and she go, and he eat, and they do. And I think this is quite a useful little method for us to use in helping us to eradicate the error that we make in the present tense in French. And if we add this additional step of the Norfolk translation method, I'm sure that we can get some much more accurate present tense in French. So let's have a look and see how it works. OK, if we look at this slide here, if we think of sentences in standard English to describe the photo cards we um, have to work with in French, we look at this picture on the right hand side of the slide and we start saying things like, they are looking at a laptop, or they are smiling, he is wearing glasses, they are laughing, she is drinking a milkshake, she is pointing at the screen. Now all of these are perfectly good sentences in standard UK English, but if we use these as the starting point um, for our French, I think we're going to get ourselves in a pickle. And we're going to try and translate the word is and translate the word are and the ing bit and we're going to end up with French that is incorrect. So we're going to apply a Norfolk translation. So here's our flag again, our Norfolk flag and the Norfolk translation method. Let's have a look at that slide. Well, not that slide again, but let's look at the sentences from that slide, this time with the standard UK English and alongside it, the Norfolk translation method so that we think a little bit differently before we try to translate into French. Now I realise this is probably going to annoy your English teachers, but still let's have a look at this. So, UK Standard English, they are looking at a laptop. What we need to do is we need to put it in Norfolk English to help us to get the French translation right. So we say, they look at, laptop, at a laptop, they look at a laptop. They are smiling becomes, they smile. He is wearing glasses becomes, he wear glasses. They are laughing becomes they laugh. She is drinking a milkshake becomes she drink a milkshake. And she is pointing at the screen becomes she point at the screen. Now what you can see I'm doing here is I'm taking out the is's, the are's and the ing's and just stripping it right down so that we start to think differently about how we then translate from that Norfolk, norfolk -y version into the French version. So let's have a look at some more examples. So for example, if we look here, we have he is going becomes he go, she is eating becomes she eat, he is watching 
becomes he watch. They are preparing becomes they prepare. They are playing, they play. They are doing, they do. They are talking, they talk. They are laughing, they laugh. And this makes it easiest for, for us to look things up as well, because if you look, he go, go is the infinitive, eat is the infinitive, watch the infinitive, prepare, play, do, talk, laugh. They're all the infinitive, which makes it much easier to look up in the dictionary, because that's the form we'll find in the dictionary. So what we end up with is a situation where conjugation of the present tense in French mirrors broad Norfolk. We have subject pronoun, and we're going to be using he, she, and they here, plus verb. So for example, if we take the French phrase, il joue, that's he play. Elle mange, she eat. Il discute, they discuss. Elle travaille, they, group of girls, work. So by making that interim step and translating it to Norfolk English and not the UK standard English, we eliminate the desire to try and put stuff in there that doesn't need to be there. The is's and the ars and all that. So we just have, il joue, elle mange, il discute, elle travaille, he play, she eat, they discuss, they work. Now if we look at this next slide, what we can see is on the left hand side we have the Norfolk English stripped down. So instead of he is going, we have he go, and she eat, and he watch, and they prepare, and they play, and they do, and they talk they laugh and we have the French equivalent on the other side and as you can see it's just two parts. Il va, elle mange, il regarde, il prépare, notice we don't pronounce the NT, il prépare, elle joue, ils font, ils parlent, ils rigolent. So by going into that Norfolk English and just having the two parts, he go, she eat, he watch, we then mirror that by just having the two parts in the French, il va, elle mange, il regarde, il prépare, elle joue, il font, il parle, il rigole. So if we remember that first slide we had where we looked at the picture and we had it in standard English, now we've got the same sentences uh, where we're just taking it from Norfolk English into French. So they look at laptop, becomes il regarde un ordinateur portable. They smile, il sourit. He wear glasses, il porte des lunettes. They laugh, il rit. She drink a milkshake, elle boit un milkshake. She point at the screen, elle montre au doigt, du doigt l'écran. Elle montre du doigt l'écran. And what we've done is we've chopped out any of the is's and the ars, and we've got rid of that mistake by making that extra step and taking it in to the Norfolk translation. So what we can see now is uh, what could be a full transcript of a description of the photo that we see. Sur la photo, je peux voir un homme et deux femmes. Il regarde un ordinateur portable. Il sourit. L'homme à droite, il porte des lunettes. Il rit ensemble. Il y a une fille à gauche. Elle boit un milkshake et elle montre du doigt l'écran du portable. So on the photo I can see a man and two women. They are looking at a laptop computer. They are smiling. The man at the right, he is wearing glasses. They are laughing together. There is a girl on the left. She is drinking a milkshake and she is pointing at the screen of the laptop. But accurately translated because we went to the Norfolk method first. Now what we can actually do is we can make more complex sentences by taking out the he and she in our sentences uh, and joining two parts of a sentence together so we can say uh, there is a boy full stop he is eating an ice cream or we could say there is a boy who is eating an ice cream or as we put it into the Norfolk translation method there is a boy who eat an ice cream. So we're going to have a look at that together, how we join two main clauses together using the conjunction qui, meaning who. Um, still using that translation method to make sure that we don't have any extra is's and ah's and ing's in our written work. So let's have a little look at an example. Okay, so here we have a picture. And if we look at the English, it says in standard English on the photo, there are some young people who are playing basketball. I can see a girl 
who is wearing the number seven. So what we need to do first is we need to strip this out and turn it to Norfolk English. On the photo, there are some young people who play basketball. I can see a girl who wear the number seven. So there, we've stripped out anything we don't need and we've got a very Norfolk sounding sentence. Okay, on the photo, there are some young people who play basketball. I can see a girl who wear the number seven. So what we could do now is we can now look to translate that from Norfolk into French. So we have on the photo, there are some young people who play basketball. I can see a girl who wear the number seven, which becomes, sur la photo, il y a des jeunes qui jouent au basket. Je peux voir une fille qui porte le numéro sept. Sur la photo, il y a des jeunes qui jouent, who play, au basket. Je peux voir une fille qui porte, who wear, le numéro 7. So there you can see, by going for the Norfolk sounding method, we're able to translate that without any extras or any unnecessary words from the standard English. Let's look at another one. Standard English first. On the photo, I can see a family who are preparing a meal. There is a little girl who is making a salad. Let's first of all go into the Norfolk English. On the photo, I can see a family who prepare a meal. There is a little girl who make a salad. On the photo, I can see a family who prepare a meal. There is a little girl who make a salad. So with the Norfolk step in place, we can then look and see how we would then translate that into French. And here it comes. On the photo, I can see a family who prepare a meal becomes Sur la photo, je peux voir une famille qui prépare un repas. There is a little girl who make a salad. Il y a une petite fille qui fait une salade. Il y a une petite fille qui fait une salade. Once again, by going through that Norfolk step, having that way of thinking where we're replacing the conjugated verb in standard English with the infinitive to make it sound dead broad Norfolk, it actually helps us to be able to then do things accurately in French. Okay, let's do another example. There are some friends who are watching a match. They are eating pizza. Let's take it through the Norfolk step. There are some friends who watch a match. They eat pizza. There are some friends who watch a match. They eat pizza. Okay, so what does that give us in terms of a translation? So we get there are some friends who watch a match, they eat pizza, becomes il y a des amis qui regardent un match, ils mangent la pizza. Il y a des amis qui regardent un match, ils mangent la pizza. So again, we haven't got any of the extra is's or ah's or ing's that we would have if we translated directly from the standard English. So hopefully this has got us into that mindset of changing how we uh, approach the translation before we try to do it by putting in that additional norfolk -y step. Now what you could do is pause the video, have a look at this slide, and see if you can take these from Standard English to Norfolk English in preparation for doing the translation into French. Taking it from Standard English to Norfolk English in preparation for the translation. So pause the video now and have a go. Okay, here are the answers. And as you can see there, all of the is's and the are's and the ing's have been stripped out. And we get that subject pronoun he, she, he, they, followed by the infinitive. He drink, she dance, he watch, they talk, they share, they do, they swim, they jump, he listen, she use, he think, they shout. So hopefully you've got that first step right. Obviously the logical next step would be to see whether or not we can translate those into French. But before we do, it'd be really useful to make sure that we know how to use uh, a tool such as word reference to help us to be able to do that. So hopefully by now everybody's used to using word reference as a reference material. I've got the uh, bookmark here on my Google Chrome main screen and what we do is I can press on that now and come up to the word reference search box. I've got it set to English and French 
And what I'm going to do is if I'm looking to conjugate verbs and conjugate verbs correctly, I'm always going to start with the infinitive. So I type uh, an infinitive in and I've typed the English infinitive drink and I pick the English it says there to drink. There we are. Uh, and I'm going to click on that and it's going to take me to the definition of drink. And I can look down, I can check. It's got V for verb and it's got the word boire. I know that's the verb to drink. So I can click on the uh, on the word boire. Uh, I just hop over it and then I press and it takes me to the French definition of boire. Now I want to do is conjugate it. And it's great. Word reference is obviously the opportunity to conjugate in French or in English. Well, I know the English verb. It's the French I'm after. So I click on conjugate in French. And there we have. We have a complete verb paradigm, all time frames, all tenses that we could possibly dream of for the verb boire to drink. And they're organized in rows. Okay, we've got four rows, I think, there of separate definitions. And they're also organized into columns. And if we start with the rows first, we choose by row first and then column to find our verb. And we're going to be working in row one, column one, which is the present tense in French. There it is, the present. And as we can see there, we have the entirety of the present tense in French for the verb to drink. I drink, you drink, he drinks, she drink. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be concentrating on the present tense. And in particular, we're going to be, when we're describing pictures, talking about third person singular, he and she, drink, there it is there, boy. Or we're going to be looking at the third person plural, they, either they masculine or mixed group, or they feminine, drink, and there we have it, boive. So we can find any verb, any verb at all in the present tense, either the third person singular or the third person plural to describe what he or she is doing in a picture or what they are doing in a picture. So if we want to find any verbs, we're not just going to go to here because this, this means we need to know the infinitive in French. So we're going to go back to the general definitions box by clicking on word reference at the top of the screen. Uh, we'll type in a new infinitive. In this case, we're going to type in dance and we're going to look for dance. And we look down here, we find dance and it's a verb, yet yeah, verb. Uh, and we come across and we click on danser. Then we want to conjugate it in French, conjugation. Then we're going to be looking at row one, column one, the present tense. And we're going to be looking, there we are, present. And we're going to be looking at third person singular. He or she dance, il, elle danse. And we're going to be looking at third person plural, il, elle danse. Remember not to pronounce the NT, il, elle danse. So those are the two key parts of the present tense that we're going to be using third person singular, third person plural when we're describing our pictures. Let's uh, uh, have another little look, put another infinitive in. So we've got share. Click on share, the English. We look down. Is this the verb we want? We look at the definitions in the middle. This seems about right. Partager. Okay, I'm going to click on that. Then I click on the conjugation in French. So it takes me to the verb. Then I'm going to go row one, column one. That's the present tense. And I've got the third person singular. Uh, and the third person plural in row one, column one. Il partage, elle partage, he share, she share. And I've got... Il partage and elle partage, pluriel, they share. So that shows that I can find those third person, singular and plural, to describe what people do in a picture just by searching with the infinitive in the word reference dialog box. So we can go now to shout, same thing again, found the English, look down there, that's the verb. Brilliant, I'm looking in the right sort of place. Crier, click on crier, conjugate in French. Then I want to do the present tense, so I'm going to go into row one, and I'm going to go column one. And if I'm going to say he shout or she shout, il crie, elle crie, they shout, il crie, elle crie, with the NT on the end. So I can find any verb, any verb I want at all with no problem. So if you remember this slide, we looked at this just before we went on to word reference. Why not have a go 
at seeing if you can translate each of these, and it's already in the um, uh, the Norfolk form, so it's already in the Norfolk form. Can you translate these into French? Okay, can you take these Norfolk forms to the French and see what answers you get? Uh, uh, and what I'll do is I'll put an answer slide up at the end so you can check your answers. So if you pause the recording after three, then you can see what you can do. Of course, don't forget to use word reference to check out your infinitives and conjugate your verbs. Okay, one, two, three, and pause. So here we have the answers. See how many you got right. He drink a Coke. Il boit un Coca. She dance. Elle danse. He watch the television. Il regarde la télé. They talk. Il parle. Of course, that could have been elle parle as well, because it can be either masculine or feminine. They share a pizza. We've got that in both cases here. Il ou elle partage une pizza. They do cycling. Il ou elle, pluriel, font du vélo ou font du cyclisme. Two possibilities there. They swim. Il ou elle nage. They jump. Il ou elle saute. He listen to music and she use her phone. Il écoute la musique et elle utilise son portable. He think but they shout. Il réfléchit ou il pense, mais il ou elle crie. So those were the possible answers that you could have had, taking it from the Norfolk to the French. So what I'm hoping is that the uh, Norfolk translation method, as I've called it, will help us to eradicate the mistakes that we many of us are making when we are doing our picture cards and we're translating what is going on or what people are doing we take it into that Norfolk method and hopefully then uh, we will be more accurate in our use of the present tense, particularly if we use tools such as a word reference to help us. And if we remember, this is what we were trying to do during this video, to address that most common error on the picture card where we are putting is's and ahs and ings where we don't need them. So look at that new method of trying to help remove that problem, having a look at how we can join sentences together with the uh, conjunction qui or who and using word reference to find those verbs. So best of luck with your future picture cards.